Hey y'all, this is Stacey Barth and you know I got soul. I'm happy that it's finally out, you know, just because uh, it's been a long time coming and um, I feel it important for people to hear it because it's like, you know, talking about the human condition and I feel like everybody will be able to find at least one song that they could be like, oh my God, why are you talking about life right now? Well, because I'm, I'm pretty transparent, like I'm very honest, like almost to a fault. And um, I don't hide anything, and I don't sugarcoat, or I don't play politics, because that means, like, I'd have to lie. So I'm just, like, forthright in my whole being. So it wasn't really that difficult to emote whatever I was writing about for the album, because um, my writing for me is very autobiographical, you know? So it wasn't that difficult. I think it's important because especially for people of color for in the urban community, like some of the things that I'm talking about are very taboo and swept under the rug, you know, as far as suicide and depression and alcoholism and stuff like that. Like, you know, our our community doesn't believe in therapy. They believe and deal with it, you know, and I'm very, I'm like a tiny white woman stuck in this body. Um, so it's like I'm very open about my shortcomings, you know what I mean? It's like not a thing for me. People are like, oh my God, you're so brave for singing this. I'm like, brave for being me. Okay. I'll take it, whatever. Um, he is one of my, like, I, it dates back to 2005 when I first heard Ordinary People. And I was just like, this is a brilliant song. Um, as far as I go with him, he respects me as a songwriter and as an artist, so he his input just was like, I'm here for whatever you need, but do your thing, because your thing is magical, so do that. So he didn't really have, I don't want to say input, but he didn't really meddle, you know? He just let me do my thing, and then when it was done, he was like, oh, this is awesome. I don't really have any criticism. Um, he co-wrote Here I Am With Me. And, um, yeah, he's just, he's awesome. He's, like, one of the most even keel people I've ever met, you know, in the music business. Because he's just cool. He's, like, cool as a cucumber. He's so, you know. Well, I never really came to that place. I just got tired of doing endless sessions for free. And I ran out of money for my publishing deals. I was like, um... And nobody wanted to sing my songs. I was like, I'm just going to put these songs out. Um, and it kind of happened by default. Because when I put out my EP, I was like 350 pounds. I was like, no, don't nobody want to hear me sing these songs. And But also, don't nobody want to sing these songs. So uh, it kind of happened by default. I'm I'm only involved with projects that I care about. Like, before I was chasing projects, like, I was doing endless sessions, hoping, it was like auditioning, like, hoping somebody would pick my song for their album. Now I'm just connecting with like minds and like spirits. So I do things with people that I like and that like me. Um, well, with Becoming, there, if you see the artwork, it's like a half a butterfly. And if you know the shelf life of a butterfly after they die in the cocoon as a caterpillar to become a butterfly, They're, they only live for about four weeks. So I think the beauty in becoming is that <laughs> death is completion, you know, so that's why it's half of a butterfly. So as long as I'm living, I'm always going to be trying to become ing. I'm always going to try to get to whatever is next, you know what I mean? So even when I become this one thing, when I get there, I'm going to be trying to become something else. So, you know, as human beings, as long as we're alive, we're forever becoming. And, yeah, that's what I want people to take away.